One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. End of test. This is in contact with the test. One, Roger, and your lock. Clear here. All <laughs> to the Galactic Chloe Show. I am Galactic Chloe live from the moon and meeting with another exciting scientist from EPFL today. His name is Professor Andy Oates. He's not only a researcher in developmental biology, he is also the brand new dean of the Faculty of Life Sciences at EPFL. Hi Andy, welcome on stage. Hi. How was it riding a bicycle with the lunar gravity? Uh, well, the climbs were a pleasure. But uh, handling the, the cornering going downhill, it was a, a little bit nerve-wracking, actually. It's good to be here, though. And in a couple of sentences, could you introduce yourself? I'm Andy Oates. I'm a developmental biologist. I grew up in Australia, but I've lived all around the world. And uh, now I'm studying how fish make their backbone uh, here at EPFL. I actually took a look at the uh, EPFL website to see what you're doing exactly. I have the, the description right here. Okay, okay, go for uh, it. <laughs> so you're a world-renowned scientist because you're working on oscillating genetic programs that trigger the development of embryonic body segments in a precisely defined time sequence. Correct. Three, two, three. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> wow, C could you translate that for us? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, so um, what I'm trying to work out is how the backbone forms in an early embryo. So we study fish because they're nearly transparent and you can look into the developing fish baby as it's growing. This is in the first day of life. And the first thing it does, it sort of makes its head. And then as it adds the segments of its body, which will be each of its backbones, uh, it does that rhythmically and sequentially, so each one after the other. And the amazing thing is that the, the cells in the tail of the fish as it's growing, each of those cells has a genetic clock, so a genetic oscillator, and all of those clocks are ticking together, they synchronize with each other, sort of give a pulse. And as the fish grows out, each time that clock goes once round, it makes the signal to put in the next backbone. So it literally goes tick, 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 tick as it grows, making its backbones. I mean, it's amazing. You can't make this stuff up. It's the case in fish, but also in humans? Yes, all vertebrates, uh, snakes, whales, mice, uh, humans, they all make their backbone in, in basically the same way. I mean, there are, some, there are some differences, sort of, I would say, almost technical differences, but yeah, that's it. Beautiful snake! You're just a little grumpy now. They're just like people. She just wants to move away from me. A lot of people think that snakes are evil, ugly monsters that cruise around killing people. And those fangs, those, those fangs, they're like hypodermic needles. Two hypodermic needles sitting in the back of their head ready to... Whoa. And what is the, the purpose of this study? I guess for me, it's really a really basic question about how life organizes itself. So how you get um, all of these cells individually, they're actually quite noisy clocks. Then they're, they're not really good at keeping time. You wouldn't want to try and catch the train by, but when they all get together, they become much more precise sort of as a collective, as a community, they keep a really strict beat. Um, so I'm sort of interested in how these bigger patterns over what will eventually be the whole scale of the body, how they arise from these really noisy, small interactions that, that need to be con co communicated. And so that would, that's sort of like the scientific motivation, pattern formation. And, um, and the application would be, well, y you know, the same mechanism is operating in a fish or a human. And so when, when this clock goes wrong, when the clock breaks down, it means that there's no um, clear rhythm 
that these cells can make. And so there's no clear signal in the embryo for where to put the new backbones. And so the animal ends up making its backbone in a whole sort of disorganized and twisted way. And that's actually congenital scoliosis. That's a birth defect where the whole backbone is twisted and, and compressed. So, you know, we, we think or we hope, uh, actually we, we've got some pretty good evidence <laughs> actually that um, by studying this in the fish, we, we learn how, the, um, how it works in a human. And maybe the goal would be if we could cure the fish, we might have a way of bringing some cure to, to humans. So you're, you're seeing uh, fish develop yep. with this kind of uh, diseases? Or, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's right. But it must be so different in humans, right? <laughs> I mean, those fish are like this small. Yeah, but that's how big we are when we're making our backbone too. So most people, they've finished making the pattern for their backbone. So actually, I should, I should say, um, you know, there's no bone cells yet. The bone cells will take about another week to actually, you know, develop and become all bony and hard. But the pattern, the cells are already in place. They make the pattern already early. And, you know, you'd finished making your backbone probably, very likely, before your mum was aware she was pregnant. That's how early it is. That's why the fish is a really good model. So some of the genes that the fish use to synchronize its cells, they're the same genes that are mutated in uh, families that have a congenital form of scoliosis. And so you hope to be able to treat this disease at some point? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's, it, that's a tough one. That's a tough one because, you know, if, if you're pregnant and you don't even know you're pregnant yet, how are you going to know that you might need to fix something? So I guess it could be like um, how you can take vitamin B12 when you're pregnant and that folic acid, so it, you can take it in, a, it's just a normal vitamin, mm -hmm. right? And that almost completely prevents uh, spina bifida, which is a disorder where your, your um, spinal cord doesn't roll up properly. And that can be quite devastating, actually. But if you take vitamin B12, I guess 99% just goes away. So it could be, and this is the goal, if we can find something that's safe or even healthy for an expecting mother to take, she might be able to protect herself um, from that happening. And maybe it's only really useful if there's already a history in the family of that occurring. You might go, okay, I better take that so, so, that, my, so that my baby doesn't get that mm -hmm. uh, in the womb. Those are the plans. It's possible in principle, we now, to, we now need to find out whether it actually works in practice. And that's the purpose of your research? That's the application of my application research. Application of your research. <laughs> yeah. And is this why it interests you? Why did you decide to do developmental biology? That's a good question. Um, gosh, it's quite, it's quite aesthetic, really. I don't know. I, I, the, the, when embryos are growing, or just looking at cells dividing and all these kind of things, they're so beautiful. They're just amazing patterns. And for me, I guess it created a sense of uh, awe and mystery about that, those processes. And then you just get curious and you want to, how, how on earth could that work? Uh, you know, if you'd asked me about how backbones form, I probably wouldn't have said, oh, there must be a population of oscillating cells. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know, but yeah, but that's what it is. Do you heard also another, another story, a funny one, about uh, your mother being uh, quite a decisive uh, point in your path to get you into science? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should always listen to what your mum says, uh, turns out. No, she said... Uh, well, I wanted to be a, a bicycle racer when I was a kid. Uh, first, I wanted to be an astronaut, of course. <laughs> and then uh, when I realized Australia didn't have a space program, I thought I wanted to be a bike racer. And um, I was racing my bike and um, I hurt my knee. And I, I went home and said, oh, I need to fix my knee. And my mum said, well, um, if you're going to stay in our house, you better go to university then you can stay here for free so you know, she they're probably watching me well let them let them see what kind of a person i am i'm not even gonna swat that fly i hope they are watching they'll see 
they'll see and they'll know and they'll say, why, she wouldn't even harm a fly. So I went to university and then I really liked it. So good decision. Accidental scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Let's learn more about fun facts about you right with it. your logbook shot from the moon. Australia or Switzerland? Switzerland. Dean or researcher? Researcher. Cycling or gardening? Cycling. Fish to eat or fish to study? Fish to study. I'm a vegetarian, actually. So Australia, Switzerland, have you lived other places? Yes, indeed. Uh, the US, Germany, uh, and the UK. Oh, there he is. So that's Jungle Jim. What is your favorite place? Oh, that's too hard. Um, <laughs> my favorite city is probably London. And my favorite countryside is right here, uh, just back towards the Jura. It's amazing. So good thing you ended up at EPFL. Yes. <laughs> not only as a researcher, not only as a professor, no. but also now as the new dean of yeah. the Life Sciences faculty. Yeah. How has it been so far? Well, I don't know um, what I did to deserve this job but it must have been something very, very evil in a previous life. <laughs> I've been gored, clawed, chomped, bitten, savaged, jumped on, whacked, peed on, even groped. And every single time it's been my fault. It's an amazing job. I mean, it's super interesting. There's um, lots and lots of, I just so many new things you need to learn at lots of different levels. For me, one of the hardest things is dealing with all the um, issues that come up with, with different people, their problems and what they want to do. and Because you're used to thinking about scientific problems, but this is a whole new, uh, whole new world. Super exciting though. It's a challenge to shift between research and uh, management. Yeah, it, it is a big challenge. I think it's, um, I've, I've developed some sort of guiding principles. One is you should treat everyone as if they're an intelligent human being kind of breakthrough. Um, Not everyone is. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone is. I just think that we don't always treat them as if they are. You have to help me get up there. Uh. <laughs> I think one of the challenges is trying to keep all of the different things in your mind that you need to keep track of. Uh, to keep them all, all ready, ready to use when you need them. So sometimes by the end of the day, I'm, I'm quite tired out and I, uh, yeah, get a lot of sleep, need a lot of sleep. <laughs> but you enjoy it? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I do enjoy it. Yeah, it's really challenging, really interesting. So no chances you'll drop everything to become a professional cyclist again? Ah, uh, not at my age. <laughs> Is it, is it a passion that you had uh, since you were little? Cycling? Yeah. Um, yeah, it is actually. I used to ride around when I was four or five or something. Actually, I used to ride my mum's bike because she had one of those bikes, you know, that you can step through. Mm. So I could reach up to the handlebars and stand on the pedals and pedal. That was very cool. And then I saw this beautiful movie. Um, Paul Yates is the director called Breaking Away. And it's about um, a kid who races bikes um, and tries to find his way in the world. It's really nice, you check it out. And at this stage, would you, did you imagine yourself as a scientist also or? No, no, I don't think so. I, we had some engineers in the family, civil engineers, um, and I kind of liked science. I, I, you know, I really loved all of David Attenborough's TV shows. I used to be glued to the TV. And I, I had two books when I was growing up, one about um, McFarlane Burnett, um, who's an immunologist, and the other one was about using radio waves to map uh, galaxies. They were sort of illustrated books, uh, like cartoons and stuff, very beautiful um, watercolour artwork. And I don't know, I, I read those, but I was thinking about that. What were my earliest memories of thinking about what it might be like to be a scientist? Yeah. But you did want to be an astronaut. Absolutely. Did you apply to the latest selection? No, do they take people my age? The upper limit is 50, I believe. Damn. <laughs> well, talking about Earth, let's take a look at what's happening today on Earth. 
The summer is ongoing and the exam session seems so far away. Although it was a stressful moment for most students, some found ways to relax. Idea number one, take a short break at Satellite as it is now open and ready to welcome you again. Idea number two, you could have followed the Euro Cup and watched Switzerland beat for the first and maybe only time, France at a soccer game. ID number three, create EPFL memes and post them on Facebook so they can be featured at the Galactic Chloe Show. How this magical game between France and Switzerland, we even caught it live here. Did you watch it? I didn't watch it, actually. I, I was riding through Morges just during the penalty shootout and uh, it was pouring with rain that night. And uh, I heard, I suddenly heard all the shouting and celebrating and I was looking around for what was going on and I hit something in the road and actually <laughs> uh, spread myself out. So yes, I, I remember it distinctly. <laughs> <laughs> Memorable night for you as exactly. well. Exactly. <laughs> well, we come to the end of this episode and I have one last question for you. Do you have a message for the people watching us, maybe to get them into biology? Well, I think that the wonders of life are they're really amazing and they're at all different scales from ecosystems to individual organisms to the cells to I mean and this is inspiring and awesome and you know you can understand it by studying it and for me it just makes the um, the beauty even stronger so yeah I would say go for it wonderful Andy biologist EPFL Dean and cyclist Thank you so much for going all this way to the moon for us. You are very welcome. And have a safe trip back. Thank you. Make the most of your vacation and have a very nice summer. We will prepare new interviews for you with exciting research and uh, humans behind the research at the Galactic Toy Show.